Good morning, Modern Steaders. In today's video, we're going to be talking about our wood stove and how we heat 3,000 square feet without any electricity. This has been our most requested video so far. For starters, we'll talk about the wood stove itself. This stove is a DS Energy Max 160. Right here is a handle. It's got shaker grates inside. You shake that handle, it takes the grates and it shakes them. It shakes the coals and the ashes, and all the ashes fall down below. We have the ash pan down below here that we can collect all the ash in, and we pull it out and take it outside, and we can dump out the ash. and the wood ash we can use in the garden in our compost piles. On the left side of our stove, we have a dial that we can move from one to, from low to high, which is one through five. And this, you adjust depending on how hot or cold you want it in your house. We'll go in the inside. You can see it's connected to a rod and that goes from the outside metal housing to the inside box and in the box there's gears that are on a chain if you follow it down below there's a metal flap right here that opens and closes and what this does is it allows more or less air into the wood stove the more air you put in the hotter the fire is going to burn while we're right here, we're gonna go over the stove and the functions of the stove and how it works. And then after that, I'll dive deeper into how we set up our house to maximize natural convection heating so we can heat the whole house without electricity. It works awesome. We have an eight inch chimney going outside and I have a damper in it so we can control the airflow going up and out the chimney. That gives you more control over how hot your fire gets. It's made out of quarter inch thick steel. Over here is the tag and a serial number. It has a shroud around it because it gets so hot they don't want you touching it. Right in here, it's got tubes. I should get a flashlight. Let's do this. Let's see if we can. These tubes just go straight down past the side of the wood stove to the floor. All five of them are just opened up. So what ends up happening is through natural convection, cold air falls and when it falls to the floor, it, the heat of the stove pulls it in the direction of the stove. And then it, as it warms, it naturally rises through the wood stove and comes up and just creates air turbulence throughout the whole basement. Let's see if I can find, here we go. We have no fans going in the basement. And I don't know if you can see, but the cobwebs are moving pretty good. That's just from the natural convection of the stove. A couple of the other nice benefits of the natural convection heat is there's is a good radius around the stove out to where Figaro is. The ground is nice and really warm. So it's a great place to warm and dry your boots, your coats. With the natural convection, we can hang stuff way back here and it dries it very quickly. We have a hanging rack for drying our clothes in the wintertime inside and it dries the clothes nicely. But we have no need for an electric boot dryer. We go to put our boots on, our slippers on. They are nice and toasty. Would you agree, mister? While I was designing the house, I knew we were going to be living in northern New Hampshire and it's a very cold climate. We wanted to heat our house with wood. So I was keeping in mind and researching quite a bit, what's the best way to heat with wood? If we lose power, and we have wood heat, but we need circulators to run water pumps, to run fans. 
then to me, ha heating with wood would lose part of its beauty right there is if you have wood heat, but you can't circulate the hot air throughout the house, why would you want to do that? And I wouldn't want to have to have a backup wood stove to heat my house with if I already had a big wood furnace. So I wanted to find a way to heat the house with wood without electricity. Doing quite a bit of research, I stumbled across the DS stove as one of the options. And I researched it quite a bit. And I found it for what we were going for, it looked the nicest and it had the best functionality to it that we could use. There was a lot of other stoves out there I found, but they weren't very nice looking. And I wanted something, it's in our basement, so it's not a centerpiece, but when it's 20 below zero, we want to come sit by the wood stove. It's got a glass door. We can watch the flame. A lot of the other ones, they were all steel. You couldn't see a flame, and it just looked more industrial. So we, that's one of the reasons we went with the DS stove. And it suited us very well. We liked it. So I knew we were going to be heating with natural convection at that point. So I had to figure out what's the best way to design the house to get this to work. So I designed the house almost around the wood stove. One of the things, one of the things I kept in mind is, is I want a chimney that I can clean. I don't want to neglect cleaning my chimney because it's a pain in the butt. I clean our chimney about every time we burn one to one and a half cords of firewood. So it's quite a bit because we'll go through between four to five cords of firewood a year. I want to be able to access my chimney and keep it clean. I want to know that my chimney is clean, that I don't have to worry about creosote building up and starting a chimney fire. The other thing I knew is I, we ha I wanted a metal roof on our house because we have a lot of snow and I never wanted to have to get up on my roof and shovel off snow. We've done that before. It's not fun. So I wanted a metal roof, and you can't flash a metal roof any great way when it won't in a few years leak. So I didn't want my chimney going through my roof. So I wanted to have my wood stove on an exterior wall, the chimney up and going out, and that way I can clean it easy. I don't have to get on the roof to clean it. I can stay down here, I get an easy clean out, and I can clean it. I'll show you that in a minute. So that was... Something else that was going on around in my head. So, okay, we got, we got to be able to clean it easy. We don't want the chimney going through the roof. How can we design it so we get good airflow and we can heat the basement and the second story? Then I started reading about cold air drops. You cut vents in your floor and put an air duct that's at least 18 inches below the floor. Cold air will drop naturally. So I made mine out of 3 8 plywood. You can't see it, but I have my hand here. I can feel the cold air falling. If I back off with my hand, it's warm, like the basement temp. If I go here, I can feel cool air falling over my fingers. I'll bring you upstairs and I'll show you the grates we put in. If you wanted to, you could go all the way down to the floor, about 18 inches above the floor, and the cold air would fall if you weren't getting enough air movement. What ends up happening is, is we design the house with the stairway in the center of the house. The heat rises up the stairway and the cold air falls through our ducts that we have. We have one. I have one by the root cellar. I took out the ductwork. I need to put it back in. But you can see the vent over there. The cold air will still fall, just not as well. And then there's one back here and the ductwork right here. And then people have seen the grate that I have right here and they've asked me what's up with that one. When we go upstairs, I'll show you what that vent is for. We have one of the cold air returns over here by the front door. We have another one by our sliding glass door right here. There's one over here. This one we stuck in the corner over here because we plan on extending the kitchen more at some point. So we wanted to make sure that wasn't hindered by any cabinet space. Since the heat rises through the basement stairway, we can't have a full door. So we made a half swinging gate. 
So that way if we have it shut, we can still have hot air rising through it, but we can close it off without worrying about the upstairs not getting warm. And then the other vent we have by the stairway is right here. That's for hot air to rise up. We take our towels after we take a shower, we can hang them up here. And we have the hot air that flows across them and dries them off even faster. I've been asked also if you were designing your house, would you do it the same way you have it set up right now with the heat? Yes, this wood stove works awesome, heats the house perfectly. The one thing I would do differently if I could, which the way this house is set up, we couldn't. The foundation was already here and we just built on top of it. But I would have the wood stove under the living area so that the living area was warmer. Right now our wood stove is under our bedrooms so our bedrooms tend to be warmer than we would like them and there's not a lot of control we can have over that. We have no cold air vents on this side of the house but that warm air being right here is just going to flow up and keep the floors nice and warm which is nice when you get out of your bed in the morning feel like you have radiant heat in your bedrooms but we like to sleep in a cooler bedroom. If that's you just think about that and if you can set up your wood stove under your living area. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but I was sitting on a big pile of wood. What I try to do is I try to keep a week's worth of wood in the house. This might sound a little odd, but if you can keep your wood in your house dry and warm, you'll get more BTUs out of your wood. If your wood's wet, frozen with ice or snow, and you put your wood directly into your wood stove, it melts the snow and it puts the fire out. If it's wet, it's going to dry the wood first before you get heat out of the wood. So that takes up some of your BTUs of your wood. And if your wood is cold, the fire is going to heat your wood up first before it's going to burn it and put off all the BTUs that you're going to get out of your wood. So if you want to maximize the heat from your wood, keep it in your house and keep it pre-warmed, I guess you would call it, and you'll get more heat from your fire. There is a chart, if I can find one, I'll link it in the description down below. But there is charts out there that tell you how much BTUs you can get from different kinds of wood. If I can't find it, I'm sure another modern setter will find it and they'll link it in the comments for us. One of the other things we were thinking about while we were designing the layout and where we wanted the wood stove is we wanted to make sure we had a place that we could get the wood to it easily and the mess would be out of the main living area. Heating with wood can be messy. If you're burning a lot of it, you have a high traffic area to that area. And for us, we'd rather keep it in our basement instead of the living area upstairs. Your wood makes mess. When you're cleaning your wood stove, you get the fine dust all over the place, and that can make a mess also. We have it in our basement, right close by to our exterior door. And I put a 42 inch wide door over there, so that way I can bring a wheelbarrow through the door if I want a wheelbarrow in my firewood. We have a stainless steel metal bestest chimney on the outside of the house. Down here is a T with a clean out on it. I'll put a link right here to a video I did last year of cleaning the chimney. But this runs right up and out the house. It's cold to touch on the outside. They have a lifetime warranty. It goes right up and out. It's easy cleaning. But you gotta keep the chimney so far off the house for code. What I ended up doing when we were installing the chimney I made wood spacers to keep at the distance off of the house and they fit in with the siding. They look natural. The other nice thing about the wood stove, it's got a big metal top. So it's not necessarily a wood cook stove, but you can cook on top of it. You can heat water on top of it very easily. If we lose power for any length of time, we don't have to worry about our house not having a heat source or not having a way you can't cook. We can cook right on top of the wood stove. I'm sure we can find a way to put a Dutch oven inside the stove and do some baking in there. Or we could we could modify and figure something out so we could do baking and we wouldn't. We wouldn't go without if we lost power in the wintertime for any amount of time. I hope I answered all the questions for you modern setters on our wood stove and how we heat our house with natural convection with our wood stove. If I missed any of your questions, leave it in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get to them. 
Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.